Hi, I'm Christy Callahan with Chubby Lotus Yoga and welcome to my training on YouTube about being a size inclusive yoga teacher. Okay, so today we're talking about why there's trauma and the social impact. Look for a moment at what, what the trauma that um, your students living in a larger body are coming in with. So this is obviously a blanket statement. This is a generalization. This is from my personal experience as well as the students that I have taught over the years. So this is not every person. So just understand that if your experience has been different, um, you know, just understand this is a generalization. So imagine that you're living in a body where society is telling you that everything is wrong with it and that it has to be changed. Imagine being told that this body, your body size, is the thing that's going to keep you from having relationships, having a good job or career, um, being happy, being truly beautiful, or ever really loving yourself. In media, um, like I talked about in the last lesson, um, larger bodied people, women especially in um, movies or TV shows, uh, men as well, I guess, um, often represented as funny, goofy, insecure, um, socially awkward, um, a complete wanton disregard for health, um, gluttonous eating, um, and things like that. So that's kind of the the media's perpetuated stereotype of a larger bodied student or person. Imagine where you go to restaurants or take a flight or anywhere you have to go sit in public that you have to think about the fact that chairs are often too small for your bottom, that armrests are digging in to your thighs and then it's not comfortable. Um, you have to think about these things that other people don't have to, to consider. People that are in smaller bodies um, don't necessarily have to consider. Um, so this is the, you know, I'm kind of going into like the cultural, the culture around this. Um, you have difficulty being able to find clothes in your size. And when you do, you have to go to specialty stores to get it. Um, and it always, you know, it doesn't always come in all the very different types of fabrics, um, things like that. So you're, you're very limited to your clothing. Um, and imagine no matter what the issue is that you're going to the doctor to see, the first line, advi first line of advice is almost always to lose weight. Almost always. And this is obviously placing the blame on the patient for kind of no matter what the issue is. It's, uh, we, we call it kind of medical gaslighting, right? Like whatever you're going in for, um, it's, oh, because of your, oh, because of your weight, that you're having this issue, so lose some weight, and then that's gonna magically resolve all of your health issues, which just isn't true. It's just not true. Uh, people around you always talking about not wanting to gain weight or putting on a few pounds after being naughty, right? Imagine that every magazine cover, almost every magazine cover you look at is showing you how to lose those last 10 pounds or how to get a hot summer body or bikini ready body. Um, the people around you are so worried about their weight that they won't take medications that are good for them or that will help their symptoms because they don't want to gain weight like steroids, right? They're known to, um, you know, sometimes cause you to, to be hungry. So people don't want to take something that might really help them, um, with their symptom to not want to gain weight. Um, uh, appetite suppressants, here's another one, appetite suppressants when the person doesn't even have a, a, an overeating issue, right? So like anything to lose weight, just anything to lose weight. Imagine being a young person and being bullied, called names, all because of your body size. Um, and this is just, this is just scratching the surface, but um, you're going to the gym, trying to lose weight, doing um, exercises that you hate, not all exercises, but maybe you're, you're hopping on the treadmill or you're doing the elliptical or the stair climber or whatever, um, doing things that you hate just to punish your body into, into some type of submission. So this is the cultural impact and how we views, view our bodies. 
as little kids now again this is a generalization um as as a little as a little child more than likely up until a certain point there was a time where you could care less you didn't even think about your body or what you were eating necessarily um that this was not even something you thought about throwing on a bikini and going into the pool or going into the ocean or whatever um and never worrying about that little roll of skin that you had or your chubby arms or or whatever it just didn't even cross your mind this is this is who we are before um, our families or culture or the world or whoever got to us and started telling us that our body is our main source of worth so the this this narrative is perpetuated in the chatter what are people talking about at lunch what are they eating they're talking about a new diet a new way of life that they've started how they accidentally indul indulged in too many cupcakes or or whatever uh, and now they have to do extra time on the treadmill the place that our thoughts and conversations typically go is where we put a lot of value so when our body is our main source of worth, we punish ourselves in different ways. We're hateful to ourselves. And there is a lot of trauma that comes with this from hating the body that you dwell in. And in order for your yoga students to be able to find any level of peace or mind-body connection, uh, imagine trying to do that in a body that you hate and that you're told by the world around you is inherently bad and inherently wrong and also holds your value as a human. We know that society in, in the current kind of spoken message is love yourself no matter what, you know, that's the spoken message, but this isn't really the the real message. And I think that this will change over time. Um, I think that as this fat culture kind of starts becoming a little bit more normalized, this message will change, which is wonderful for future generations. But as of today and right now, most of us with, with uh, larger bodies are coming in with a lot of trauma. My first yoga class that I ever took, I was um, large and I decided to do it online this or online a DVD this was back in 2002 I sat in my living room and I tried to do the video but it was obviously being taught by all slim people nobody larger really to to demo anything um, and so as I forward folded over my large tummy I felt this sense of complete disgust and defeat in what I was doing. And I, I, I laid back, I'll never forget the moment, I laid back on my living room floor and I just cried. And I thought, you know, I was filled with shame and disgust and humiliation, even though nobody else was there. I was so appalled that my stomach was stopping me from doing something. I couldn't get a stretch. I was fighting with my body and so angry um, at my body and I hated it. I truly hated my body. And so I swore off, I assumed yoga is not for me. Yoga is not for large bodies. So I swore yoga off and then um, fast forward quite a few, well, I guess 2005, <laughs> five years, I got divorced, I lost a ton of weight, I got super fit and then I, you know, I had lost about 80 pounds or so at that point and I tried yoga again and I completely was obsessed. I fell in love with it and that started my, yo my yoga journey. So um, a few years later in 2010, I got my teaching certificate and then fast forward again to about 2000, between 2016, 2018, I started slowly gaining some of that weight back. And around 2018-ish, 2019, um, I started to not recognize my body anymore. Um, I had gained 100 pounds by that point, and <clears throat> I no longer know how to knew how to do yoga in my body. So I decided, well, and at that point I was a teacher, 
Um, and I, I decided I was going to go and start taking beginner classes to learn how to use props because I didn't know how to use props. Um, I was going to start from scratch. And I, my, my experience as a large student in these yoga classes was horrible. Teachers even yeah, uh, typically would ignore me um, when I would struggle in poses. I would not get help. Um, I was mostly ignored. Um, sorry about my cat. Um, and that was really disheartening. I struggled and was frustrated and um, everything was so difficult and so challenging. And I came back into this place of hating my body. And my experiences, you know, I was never given any options or variations or even the word I hate, modifications. Nobody helped me. I used to go into my car and cry. I would, I would tell the yoga teacher, great class, thank you very much, smiles, yee. And then I would go sit in my car and cry. And this is relevant because this is common. People may not go and cry, but um, because we believe that our body is to blame and our body is the issue, when we struggle in a, in a yoga pose, um, it's our fault. It's not the yoga teacher's fault for not showing us a way to make it work in our body. It's our fault. We suck. We are the ones that are to blame. So this is my experience. And again, this is experience from a lot of um, the students that I have taught over the years and talked to um, in this in this area. So darn it. So I, I think it's really important for yoga teachers to understand this because a lot of times what I hear is, well, I don't hear any complaints. I don't hear any of my larger students say anything. Um, they seem to be fine. Well, I was one of those that would seem to be fine, but I was not fine. In the next section, we'll be talking about why and how this is problematic in class. So what this, what this does to your students. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and um, subscribe to my channel. Um, support me in this endeavor to put this information out here. Um, any way that you can, again, sharing the information. I don't want to be a broken record because you're going to hear it again in the next one. Um, I will see you soon.